Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now back in 2009, when the i5-750 released, it was considered by many reviewers to be the new mainstream performance king. With four cores and four threads, well, it could pretty much run any game that was thrown at it, and I think it was a pretty good choice for the money. These days, the i5-10400 falls into a similar bracket and could be considered an excellent mainstream choice. Of course, these days I think it's closer in terms of what the competition is offering and if you want something that's better at productivity then maybe the Ryzen 5 3600 would be the way to go. Now we're not going to get into all that in today's video because in this one I thought we'd just compare the first i5, the 750 with the new i5 10 400 just to see how far things have come in 11 years. Now we've compared a few older processors with newer processors here on this channel and I'm always open to any suggestions you may have as well but in this one let's take a look at how this 4 core 4 threaded i5 750 compares to the 6 core 12 threaded i5 10 400. Now I never honestly thought we'd see an i5 with 6 cores and 12 threads so it's nice to see that we've got some serious competition taking place on the market these days. Without further ado though, let's see just how well these chips compare. Now of course you shouldn't be debating with yourself whether or not you want this 10400 or the 750, they fall into entirely different brackets. The 750 is a good choice for anyone on a budget and the 10400 is a good choice for anyone who has a little more to spend and wants to put together something new that will perform very nicely with modern games. This is just of course for a bit of fun and to check out the advancements I guess in technology too so let's get into some gaming tests. Starting off with Apex Legends and the game has the potential to go above 100 frames per second with each CPU here. With the 10400 we were using 16 gigs of 2666 DDR4 and with the i5-750 we were using 16 gigs of DDR3 clocked at 1333 MHz. So nothing fancy on both sides of the spectrum but as you can see the 10400 will pull ahead and stay ahead. Next up we have the remastered version of Crisis. This just released yesterday or the day before depending on what time this video actually gets uploaded and the game will run fine on both but uh, there will certainly be more problems on the older i5-750. Now in fact the frame rate was pretty much cut in half. Just like the original game I don't feel like this title utilises the hardware it's given particularly well so to speak. It's a fantastic looking game don't get me wrong and it will certainly melt your PC figuratively of not literally of course but yeah it's a good looking game I just don't think it uses the resources as good as it could this applies to both instances here but the average is pretty much respectable on both sides of things if you had an i5 750 you probably wouldn't be pairing it with a 1080 ti but this is just to show you the maximum potential of each processor maybe not the i5 10400 that could probably be paired with something more powerful but yeah, I wouldn't go higher than this with the 750. I wouldn't even go this high, to be honest. Now, for the Grand Theft Auto 5 test, I took a little trip to downtown Los Santos. This seems to be one of the most demanding places in the game. Now, Grand Theft Auto 5 generally tends to be more CPU intensive, and when you are driving about downtown or doing whatever in busier parts of the game, CPUs can start to struggle, and that was certainly more apparent with the older i5-750 here. The four cores and four threads are still pretty strong, but when it comes to games like this, there will be stutter. If it looks like the footage is stuttering on the left side of the screen, that's because it pretty much is. There were a few problems here. As you can see, the CPU usage is a lot higher. The GPU isn't being used as much, but the frame rate is pretty much again cut in half here by the older i5. Now, of course, in real life, you aren't directly comparing your own PC to something else. So if you didn't have a more powerful chip to compare it to, you wouldn't know any different. But where you might find yourself running into a few problems is in games like Microsoft Flight Simulator. Now, I took a trip over New York City and start spreading the news, the news that the i5-750 
is going to absolutely die in this scenario. Okay, 96% to 100% CPU usage most of the time, about 10 frames per second if you are lucky. And as you can see, our GTX 1080 Ti isn't really being utilized all that well. The same, I guess, could be said for the 1080 Ti and 10400 system, but yeah, it does perform a lot better. This is probably one of the most demanding games, if not the most demanding game that I've ever played. And yeah, it's certainly problematic on older chips. Hyperthreading is almost a necessity here, or more than four cores. So the last game tested today is Red Dead Redemption 2. Again, this enjoys a about four or more cores here. So the i5-750 isn't really that much of a problem. You are still going to see respectable frame rates, although the CPU is pretty much going to struggle most of the time. Usually it's the GPU that holds this game back when paired with a more powerful processor. If we look at the right side of the screen, you can see that the 1080 Ti is pretty much bottlenecking the i5, whereas on the left side of the screen, it's pretty much the opposite scenario though we are still seeing about 50 frames per second not quite 60 with the high settings here either way it's still a pretty decent experience on both systems so there we go 11 years later and the i5 10400 of course pulls way ahead but i think that the 750 puts up one hell of a fight i really do think it does very well especially when you consider the price that you can actually purchase these for at cex here in the uk you can pick these up for about six pounds currently which is just ridiculous for any quad core cpu and of course unlike other older chips it can still support newer games as well you won't necessarily get any errors you may get told in some instances that your cpu doesn't meet the minimum requirements but yeah it seems to run just fine in a lot of games now of course pairing it with a 1080 ti isn't the most sensible thing anyone can do but let's say you pick up a cheap secondhand 980 you pair it with the i5 and you're going to have a very nice plus 30 fps gaming experience perhaps even a 60 fps gaming experience if you don't mind turning the settings down or you play at a higher resolution of course a card like the 980 would struggle at anything higher than 1080p these days but it's all about trying to find that right balance i guess you could pair it with a more powerful gpu turn that resolution up but yeah that that really wouldn't make too much sense i think for the money as i say it's a decent cpu motherboards seem to be fairly well priced ddr3 isn't too bad you know i've seen the prices fluctuate over the past few months but I think for anyone getting into PC gaming, you could do far worse than an 1156 system, that's for sure. Anyway, all that's left to say is thank you very much for watching this video. Let me know if you still own the i5-750 or whether you've spent a bit more you own the i5-10400 and what you think of both of them down below in the comments. Let me know what you thought of this comparison. Did the i5 surprise you? Either one, that is. Leave a like on this video if you enjoyed it. Leave a dislike if you didn't. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. And hopefully I'll see you all in the next one.